that we could add later if we need to. Okay, so the eyelashes, you can etch that in if you like. I don't think I'm going to worry too. I'm just going to sort of get the bottom edges in. But the eyelashes is something you do towards the end anyways. So don't worry too much about etching them. Uh, you could probably etch the, the bottom lashes in. Or just etch an odd, odd one in every once in a while. You don't have to do every single lash. And then by the time we um, add those details, we sort of have some lashes to give us a good indication of where to place various lashes in going in different directions because they're not all going in the same direction. Okay, so, hey Luke, hey Michael. Um, Michael drew an eye which he entered into the monthly challenge which turned out amazing. So, and if there's a tip I can give you when it comes to drawing eyes is don't make the lashes go in the same direction and um, don't be afraid to do the veins in the eyes just make sure to not make them too too red <laughs> Eyes are so much fun to draw. So we have been having internet problems for the last couple of days. Um, what's today? Thursday. On Tuesday we had, it was down for four hours due to maintenance apparently. Internet maintenance. <laughs> and um, it's been happening a lot lately. So I'm not sure what the issue is. So there's 10 of you on here. If you haven't said hi yet, say hello. I have a couple of you that are very quiet. Okay. And then the eyebrow, because you don't have to put all the details of the eyebrow in either. You just um, need to get an idea of the direction. Um, you want an idea of where this shadow sort of starts and ends so you could put almost like little dotted lines around there and then just give yourself an idea of where it starts and the general shape because again, that's something we add later. So we, we want to do all the skin tones under it first before we put the details of the, the brow there. And I think we have enough.
information. To get started on this one. <laughs> uh, Jenny says, our internet was bad when we went to NBN. We've had days without internet. They sent out a repairman and turned out in the last storm. Yeah, we, we got wireless um, NBN. When we, we, we only recently got that because we, we moved into this house a little over a year ago. Um, and it didn't have any <laughs> internet, so we had wireless NBN installed. And it was great at the beginning, and now, I don't know, there seems to be a lot of issues. But I tend to forget that I don't live in a city anymore, I live in a small country town, so it's not... But you live in the city, Jamie, so... If you're having the same issues. Okay, so one of the reasons I like using the pan pastel when transferring an image is you can easily erase any sort of excess marks. And I find it's actually easier to correct your outlines and erase the extra marks. Um, it's much easier than when you use graphite. Uh, I hate erasing graf graphite because it, I almost feel like it has this, I don't know, maybe it depends on the eraser, but it doesn't erase as nice. And pan pastel is like applying chalk to paper, so of course it's going to be a lot easier to erase. And then when you need to get rid of the eraser marks, you need to use a brush. Do not use your hand. Okay, so there we have that outline. And now we're going to start applying this over there. Now. See, that's a bit easier. And may as well start with the fun part. We'll start with the iris. And so I'm going to uh, I can't start with the iris like that. Because we're doing an underlayer with watercolor pencils first. Okay, so scratch what I just said we're going to use a brown just like we did with the eye of the elderly lady that we did last week we're going to use a walnut brown and this is the out of the Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura pencils and we're going to do a we're just going to establish the values of everything even the iris and the skin tones and everything around so let me just sharpen that It doesn't fit in my sharpener. We're not having a smoother day today, are we? So the time is <laughs> it's 37 minutes since we started and this is all we have done. But this is the reality of doing art. It doesn't just happen in an instant and preparation does take time. Okay, now we're ready. So, 
looking at my reference closely, I'm going to start adding those values. Another thing you can do is you can take your black and white print and you can fold it. And then when you keep it nice and close to what you're drawing, you can see how dark you need to go in certain areas and how light. So this area in the iris is a little bit darker than the eyelid over the top, which makes sense because you, it's casting a shadow just under the eyelid. And there is a lot of brown in the iris, so I'm not worried about adding this color in there Alex says, Sheldine, you infected me with pan pastels. I need to get all of them. I know. I got the, I think the portrait set was the first one I got. And I used them once, I think. And then I was like, no, I have to get the rest. I also need to own all of them. I saw on Instagram that Ilka um, also got a full set. So Ilka has been posting a fair bit to the um, the Sheldine Art Hordes Facebook page to share some of his videos and that and um, his supplies. So this is pretty cool. There seems to be a sort of patio and like a wooden little house reflected in the eye. These reflections in the eyes are very, very handy to to put in because it really does add to the depth and the realism of the eye. Okay. Yeah, that's right, Maureen. The pan pastels will last you a very, very long time. It's not easy to get through it. They last a lot longer than your pencils do.
with Jesse on here. I invited a friend of mine to join in today's drawing, but I'm not sure if he's on. You could even go as far as applying a very, very light sort of layer on the white of the eye with the brown as well. Hey, Jesse. <laughs> Everyone here is super friendly. Jamie's asking if I got to see any of the media shower the other day. No, when? Did you? for New South Wales in Australia that sends like sort of notifies you when things are happening because I have an amazing telescope some of you would have seen some of the epic detailed photos that I get of the moon because of the telescope and that would be so good if I could just find a spot to record if there's a meteor shower and record it and see it oh but I never know and the past few nights have been super clear, haven't they? Okay, not last night, but the other the past few nights, the, the sky has been amazingly clear. And the stars are just huge. So did you just see the media shower, um, Jamie, or did you, did you know about it somehow? I don't know if it would have been on the news. If it were, I probably would have missed it because I just, I hardly ever have the TV on. I don't know what's happening out there in the world. <laughs> Jamie says, yes, we went to Yarrawonga from Melbourne to camp on the Murray. We took star photos, but didn't catch any shooting stars. We saw heaps though. Oh, that sounds amazing. Okay, so, so how did you know about the, the media shower, Jamie? How did you find out about these things? <laughs> Sorry if I got really excited about that. Some of you know I'm a little bit space obsessed. Facebook news. <laughs> that sounds so cool. He took the kids out of school and went very late on a Wednesday night. Oh. Spontaneous decisions like that can be so much fun.
Okay. And then with the um, sort of wrinkles under the eye here, because we, we're not fussing about the details of the wrinkles or anything like that. So you can just apply a, a light layer with the same pencil. Uh, I'm just going to take a ruler and just quickly establish my outline. My dogs are going to start hassling me in a second because it's that time of the day. It's breakfast time. I shouldn't say hassle, but they, they can be pretty persistent. <laughs> Jamie says, it happens every December. This year was advertised well because there was no moon. Ah. Apparently, I also saw on Facebook that there's going to be a super moon on New Year's. But I'm not sure if that's going to be here. I think my, mo I think my mom, my mom's in Israel. And I think she's the one that shared it. So I'm not sure if it's just in Israel that you'd see it and then on the end of January there's also going to be a super moon and it's going to be very red so I'd love to see that Jesse's saying it, a super moon. Yeah, a super moon is when the moon just looks huge. And usually when it's a really big, round, full moon um, and a super moon, it can look quite orange. It looks very, very orange and yellow. But it's massive. So super moon just means it looks big and it's a full moon. And strange things can happen. <laughs> it's just a nice time to take a telescope out if you have one and have a good look. eyebrow you can pretty much shade all of that in the same color I just use different pressures if I want to apply a bit more of a darker value Get me. Hmm? Fair enough, Jamie.
Okay, so around here it's going to get a smidge lighter. Well, not lighter, but I'm not putting as much pressure. Because the only things that are dark here are the eyebrows, not the skin underneath it. So I don't want to go too dark. Again, under here, a very, very light layer. So when I want to apply very little pressure, I hold the back of my pencil. And then that way, you can't apply too much pencil. So you're using the weight of the actual pencil to apply the color. You're not using the force of your hand to apply the color. Okay, I'm happy with that for the moment. Skin tone wise. Let's go with the cinnamon number 189. So we're going to apply that over the browns that we put down. And some of the areas that we haven't applied any color yet. So this is going to add a, a little bit more of a pinkish tone to the brown. And we can place that over here above the nose. Again, I'm using the weight of the pencil. I'm not using pressure with my hand. Yeah, Alex, it's the same here in Australia. We don't s celebrate Thanksgiving. Just Christmas Day and Boxing Day. Although, I don't know. I'm not that fussed, I guess. I, we I don't even have a Christmas tree up yet. I say yet, but I'm probably not going to be putting it up at all. <laughs> I know for kids and that it's it's a lot of fun like you'd want to go all out if there's kids around but even Halloween and stuff I guess I've just never I've never really been one for making a big deal but yes I do enjoy the family time that we get together So on Saturday, we are, um, so my boyfriend's Italian and his family's very Italian. And traditionally, the day before Christmas, they make these, I forget the name, but they're like, they're like, it's deep fried batter. That's almost like bread, but it's not. Um... Yeah, I, I can't remember what it's called, but that's what we're doing on Saturday. So we're going to spend time with them. And then on Sunday, we're having a massive lunch in one of the farms. And yeah. 
I went to Perth to visit my family in July this year, so I won't be seeing them for Christmas. But maybe next year. So right now you probably, I don't even think you can see what I'm doing. But I am, the color is very, very light. I'm not applying it very dark at all. But little differences like this still apply. Uh, they, they make a big difference. Subtle changes make a big difference. Um, in your art, so to put put a bit in the eye here as well. So you will see it more once I apply water. Okay, so now I want to see which areas require a bit of a darker value. So I'll press a little firmer. On some areas it needs to be a little bit darker. You can see that. Alex says we gave, us, gave up on Christmas trees because of the crazy cats. <laughs> I know, me too, the dogs, it's just too hard to keep the dogs away from it. <laughs> yeah, that's right, you guys struggle from the cold and we just struggle with the heat. Far out, this past week has been insanely hot been around the 40 degrees and the humidity is just ugh, it's yuck more pressure here oh I've been forgetting to do this to put the color there so I'm using cinnamon
Okay, with that down, I feel like I want to add a bit of a beigey sort of color. So I'm going to use the raw umber number 180. Adding a bit of those sort of yellowish tones. No, you can't go in there. How, how are you going to get out of there? Move out. Here we go. Good girl. The table that I have is a really high table. Um, that Vinnie built for me so that I could stand even though I never do <laughs> and then I've got a whole bunch of stuff stacked underneath and it's like you know, there's a one-way area you can get in there but you can't get back out unless you reverse out Taylor just tried to get in there <laughs> but she managed to twist her way out I don't know, do you guys find it with your pets that they will be, I think more with dogs than cats, but they, um, they're willing to be very uncomfortable just so that they can be around you. Like Taylor will get into the most uncomfortable spot as long as she's close to me, she doesn't care. <laughs> So I want to say that it's almost like a blue gray. The way it's blurred around the eye is very light. It's almost like the color has been removed. So I'm going to use some cold grey too, number Okay, Alex is saying the camera angle is difficult. Let's see if we can make it a little easier. So if I do that, you're not going to see both eyes. But I could probably do that. And then you guys will just have to look at the reference on your own. And I'm just going to have... It's right in front of me. It's about the best angle I'm going to get for you, Alex. Is that okay? And then you guys will just have to look at the reference. I can put their reference on here, actually.
Is that better for you, Alex? That should be a bit better. Jamie says we might have cold ham, cold chicken, roast veggies, potato salad, hot roast pork with crackle, and then putting in custard or pavlova for dessert. <laughs> How can you say those things to me? <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> I will probably be having a lot of fruit salad and vegan junk food <laughs> okay Alex is happy with that cool hey Heather Jamie, no, I have to have a look. I think I saw some photos of what you posted at the river, but um, I didn't look at any videos. Heather says, I can see I'll need to add these pencils to my want to have pile. <laughs> I know all our art supply lists just keep getting longer and longer, don't they? There's just too many things out there. I think it's, it's probably good that I only do colored pencil work. And from time to time, I might play a bit with watercolor paints, but. Imagine if I was painting as well, then you'd really spend a crap load of money on, on supplies. Especially if you're into quality paints and stuff. So I'm pretty much adding this all around the side, the cool grey, cold grey. Jamie is, what is vegan junk food? Chips, potato chips, um, vegan chocolate, granola, any, there's a lot of things that, vegan just means no animal products, so no meat or dairy. So there's still a lot of junk food that doesn't have meat or dairy. I mean, deep fried chips is vegan, but that's very unhealthy. That's junk food. So um, yeah, there's a lot out there. Just because I'm vegan doesn't mean I'm healthy. When I was raw vegan, I was very healthy. <laughs> but I still have a lot of junk food. I have phases. I have very healthy weeks. I have very unhealthy weeks. 
and then I just am pretty balanced, then I'm not so balanced. I think it's like that with everybody in food. <laughs> no worries, Jamie. Maureen does both, pencil and acrylics. She has two lists. Yep. <laughs> Heather says, I thought I was doing good with Prismacolor and Faber-Castell pencils, but now I want to get some pan pastels, and now these pencils. Ah, <laughs> uh, Jessie, we all are. And yeah, so Jessie does um, oil painting. And I'd imagine that that would be quite expensive. But the oil painting that you do, is it like really thick paint? Do you use a lot of paint or would a, your oil paints last you a really long time? So it's just like the initial setup that can be quite costly. Uh, I guess decent canvases can end up being quite costly too. Actually, <laughs> it all can be. If any of and then after I do that, I will apply the water. Uh, not here. Walnut brown, number one, seventy-seven. Okay, so the bottom of this eyelid here is even darker. Oh, cool. So Jesse says, after all of it's bored, then yes, you're right, they last a while and I do work with thin amounts. Yeah. So it's the same, like pencils, they're an investment, but they last you such a long time. So the initial cost is going to be very expensive, um, but it's not often that you need to replace them. Or if you do, you're replacing one or two every once in a while. You're not replacing the entire set. So, um, but yeah, the initial cost can can be very expensive. I mean, like when I tell like family or friends that don't know what art really cost, art supplies really cost, they think that pencil sets cost me like fifty dollars. That's what they think. So when I tell them it's like more around $400 or $500 for a set of decent pencils and they're like, what? It's like a crazy thing for them. But yeah, it's expensive. That's right, with painting you also have to be investing decent brushes. And then I think I'd be pretty slack when it comes to painting because I would not keep my brushes clean. Look 
luckily with pencils you don't have to worry about things like that it's very clean and tidy and there's no cleanup afterwards you just have to pack them away Time to add the water. <laughs> ah, Jesse says, I think charcoal and pencils are catching up for me too. <laughs> Oh no, what am I getting you guys into? <laughs> but you know, if I could encourage anybody to do anything autistic, I'd be happy. It really, it does a lot for your brain, for your mind. Exploring, exploring things that are in your mind. It's great and relaxing your mind and just it's another way of getting out of this world. It's good for you. People are so busy nowadays. They're just caught up with with the world and trying to keep up with expenses and just trying to keep up with a lifestyle that's there's no room to even take the time to think about breathing, let alone allowing yourself to rest or enjoy a little bit of creativity. Maureen's good with keeping her brushes look pristine and new. <laughs> they last longer. Yeah, it's good. I know if, if you take care of your brushes, you can make them last a long time. But I, I don't know how good I would be at taking care of brushes. <laughs> Maureen says one acrylic YouTube artist teaches us to draw in graphite. It's awesome. Which artist is that? Should um, share her work on the Facebook page. Oh, cool. The entire year of 2017 has been all about the face. I've learned so much. Yeah, let us know who she is and how to see her channel. See if any sure someone else will also get good use out of it. Okay, let's add water and see where we at.
Maureen, could I ask you to share the link to the Facebook page in the chat as well, and then um, Jesse can join that one if he wants to see. So Heather, there's there's a Facebook page called Sheldine's Art Hoards where we talk about art supplies and share the work of other artists. And then um, there's the student portal page, which is for you guys that are students. So yes, there's another one. But the Sheldine Art Hoards page is public to everybody. You don't need to be a student to, to see that page. Uh, Maureen says, The Art Sherpa. Is that her YouTube channel name? The Art Sherpa. It sounds familiar. Cool, that sounds good. Okay. So I'm going to add a fair bit of water. Oh, there's green on my brush. Maybe I'll clean my brush properly. <laughs> I'm adding a fair bit of water to the edges because that's pretty smooth. There's no detailing or anything there. We just want that gray there. So I'm not too worried if it doesn't look very smooth because the eyebrows are going to be covering this. So we just want those like skin tones underneath the eyebrows. So that when we apply the hairs on the eyebrows it, it looks like it's over skin and that we didn't just apply a bunch of dark lines randomly. Join the group if you like, and then um, we'll accept you. Okay, let's just apply water around here
you apply too much, then you can just use a damp brush and then lift sections off of it like this. Oh, yes, Heather, there's a Facebook page for the student portal group. You sh would have, I sent you an invitation email, which means you need to create your own login to get access to the student portal. So um, check your junk mail if you haven't received that in your mailbox. And the email you would have received it from, I think, is sheldine at sheldinefineart.com. But um, I'll send you a direct link to, your, to yours anyways, just to make sure you get it. So this is a really nice underlayer, what we call an underlayer, or underpainting. And this is just a great way for us to, um, to start seeing where to go next. So now we're able to just continue to work details, or apply details, apply layers, and it just helps you see a little bit more. start adding further details. That's the time. You can wait a bit longer. Yeah, it's all good. I'll sort it out with Heather. Okay. go further I think as an underpainting I'm quite happy with that so I might seal that with a fixative and start working with the wax pencils over the top transitions to be smooth and this here too let's 
see if we can move some of this color a bit further into here. Just slightly. Okay, so I'll give that a minute to dry properly and then I'm going to seal it with the Mikador fixative, so this one. It's very close up. <laughs> the matte workable fixative, Mikador. And then we'll start using the Prisma color pencils. Oh, I am using my new set of Prisma color pencils which we got. I got for $80 including shipping and it's 150 set of pencils that we had on Amazon so some of you would have seen that that was shared on the Facebook page which I was so happy when that was shared because that is the cheapest you're ever going to get those pencils. I don't think you can get them for that cheap anymore but um, I have the new ones because my pencils were getting really really tiny during all the November live streams. Okay. should be fine. I'm just going to move this camera a little bit out the way just for the moment. So that I can spray that. With a fixative. That's a pretty decent layer and that'll be enough to seal the watercolor layer in which means now we can apply our wax or oil based pencils but we're just going to be using the Prismacolor wax based pencils over the top and then when we blend that we use a liquid solvent to blend that not water because water doesn't work with wax. got to add my watch. Okay, let that dry. Any questions while we wait for that? Just um, refresh your browsers so that, because the longer you leave the video going, the more of a lag it's going to have. Oh, I forgot to say. So I'm going to refresh that too. says um, I'm logged into the student portal and able to view the live stream but cannot see how to access the chat not the same as on YouTube so on the bottom right of the video you will see the word YouTube so just click on YouTube and watch the video in YouTube if you want to access the chat Christine tutorial that I'm doing um, I I was having trouble with it because of the way I was using my fixative so I made the mistake of 
mixing the brush and pencil textured fixative with the Mikador matte workable fixative. So I use both fixatives um, to seal in the pan pastels and to apply texture back onto the paper. So I first used the Mikador matte fixative, which wasn't enough. So I decided to use the textured fixative because I wanted to add more texture to the paper, which I did and it did. Um, and now I'm not liking the way that the pencil is feeling um, for the actual crow drawing. So the background worked out fine, but the drawing of the crow is not working out so great. So I'll still finish that tutorial, but um, I am not going to do an ebook tutorial on it because I just made too many mistakes and I don't want to have to go through the process of what I did with the fixatives. Um, and then, if, but and if I I can't just skip that in the tutorial because then I'm teaching you guys something and skipping a section and then you might get a different result. So I don't think it would be fair to put that in the ebook. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use the eye that we did last week, the elderly woman's eye, because that one turned out amazing, and do the ebook tutorial on that instead. But what I wanted to ask the students, and I might do a little poll on this as well is the five part short tutorials, which aren't so short, they end up being about an hour or two each. Would you prefer it if I did it live? Or do you like it the way it is? Um, I don't know, because I, I'm getting the feeling that you guys just prefer the live tutorials more than just the boring tutorial where I literally just mention the color that I'm using and the process that I'm taking. You seem to enjoy the conversations that we have on here a little bit more. So I'm wondering if the five part tutorials, I'll still have them as five part tutorials where we work on different sections of an entire drawing. The only difference will be that it will be live for students. So it's up to you guys to decide. Yeah, I saw that, Maureen. Christine's watching it on the portal, but can't figure out how to get over to YouTube. Um, let, me, let me go to the portal and see what it looks like in the portal. Um, Christine, like, if you're watching this, maybe um, go through... No, you're not on Patreon anymore. Okay, student portal. Log in. live streams is there not a okay so I'm clicking on it yeah so she should just click on the YouTube button Christine if you hover over the video and on the bottom right you'll see watch on youtube.com and click on that it should work Oh, Tracy says she had to click the share button, then the dots to see the YouTube link. Oh. Okay, I, ho I hope we can figure it out. I just realized something. That there. Maureen says she personally prefers the lives. Jamie as well. Yeah, hey Jackie. <laughs> okay. Cool. So we are good to go. Now, I didn't tape my paper down properly, so that is why it's still warped. Hopefully it will go a little flatter. Right. Now, we can start adding our Prismacolor pencils. Which I think I'm going to put next to me here. I 
a tray with wheels. I just want to wheel over to the other side. So I am going to come in with a very dark grey. Where's my espresso colour? Espresso PC1099. Just gonna sharpen that. can start adding those dark areas. Christine's on the iPad and can't see the watch YouTube. <laughs> Jesse says the live broadcast feels more interactive. Yeah, it is. And it's nice because you you make connections with people all over the world and everybody we've made some really nice friendships on here. Um, especially during November because we did a live stream every day. Maybe um, Maureen, until we can figure it out, just get Christine to comment on Facebook whatever she wants to say and um, I will read it then. Let me see. Okay, I'm going to go to the student portal on my phone. So I'm on the student portal on my phone. And I'm clicking on the live stream link. So we click on here. Sorry about the light. Live broadcast. And then let's make it full screen. Okay, so this is what Christine is seeing. And she wants to access the chat. Alright, I see what the problem is. So, how do you watch that through YouTube? <laughs> Let's 
so maybe if you click on the little arrow at the top okay so that's what Tracy means so click on the arrow at the top there and then click on the three dots and then it will take you through to YouTube so hopefully that works cool I didn't know it worked that way either so it's good we know that now so <laughs> we can sort that out in the future okay okay I need to charge my phone because I'm using my phone's hotspot I think so hopefully we should see Christine on the chat soon <laughs> Hopefully she was watching when I showed that. Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> Looks like, of course, we like it better if it's live. <laughs> okay. See how the more we start adding a little bit of value, a little bit of color, um, and just gradually go along, it just becomes more and more realistic.
So because we have a, a pretty decent underpainting down, we can gradually add specific details now as we add our wax-based colored pencils. So I'm paying attention to textures in the eye over here, in the creases of the eye. So the eyebrow hairs here are a bit blurry, so they're not very distinct. But I'm still paying attention to the texture of the eyebrow hairs. Christine, hello, you made it to the chat. Here's a random question. Do any of you dream a lot? And if you do, do you remember them clearly? I have been, I dream a lot. And I remember them. Um, and lately, my dreams have all sort of had the same kind of story in a different way. But I'm curious about yours. Jamie says yes and yes. That's good. Luke doesn't remember anything. Ooh, Jesse says sometimes I can feel the wind in a dream. Um, or smell the flowers. I'm the same. So I, my dreams feel so real to me as if I'm, I'm actually living them. I cannot tell that I'm dreaming. I can taste food. I can feel pain. <laughs> Jamie says, sometimes if I wake up cranky, Tim asks, what did I do this time? Uh, I've been having so many dreams about natural disasters. A lot. Alex says, most of the dreams I remember are in the early morning hours, when sleep is not that deep, but I dream in color. Cool. So good. Mm. Dreams really intrigue me. So 
sometimes I think that we are able to travel in different dimensions. We just don't know that we, or we are not consciously aware of it. Yeah, Alex is saying, what about your dreaming diary? I was so good up until October. I wrote it down every day. And yes, I know I wanted to start doing comic strips with all the dreams and stuff, but um, learning comic book design and stuff is going to take me a long time. It's not something I can do if I'm still wanting to teach like this online. So um, I'm just, I guess, going to enjoy my dreams for myself. And maybe with the fantasy art that we do once a month, I will incorporate something in there, but I wouldn't be able to give you guys the full scope of the the dreams in a comic book sort of strip. But yeah, that was an idea that was cool at the time, but I don't think I'm going to be able to make it happen. Not yet anyways. Okay, these hairs on the side gel are going to be very specific ones. so different to drawing a female eye. <laughs> I've never drawn such bushy eyebrows before. We haven't even gotten to the real color part yet, but it's starting to, to look pretty good.
The Espresso um, Prismacolor Pencils is one of the pencils that I go through a lot. So that one is one I'd have on my list for repeat buys. Um, oh, I really want to do the iris in this eye. Let's do that. So we have such a, it's like a beautiful copper kind of color. But we have Let's use a bit of the pumpkin orange. And golden rod. You can see these are new, I haven't even sharpened them yet for the first time. Continue to use the espresso color. And honey, get out of there, Bubby. Get out. Now you're stuck, honey. Honey. Out. Thank you. bit of the burnt ochre and then we'll use the white as we need to add sort of like the waxy highlights over the top so let's start off with the pumpkin red pumpkin orange PC 1032 PC1032 and then I'm just going to sharpen that okay so now I'm playing paying close attention to my reference which you can't see I'm paying close attention to the reference and adding some of the pumpkin orange. Wherever I see those darker red tones that are sort of overlapping the, the espresso color that we put down. I'm also paying attention to texture. Making sure I'm going in the right direction. some espresso to that section there. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to use let's let's add the golden rod. So PC1034.
that's a nice question, Jamie. How long have you guys been doing arts? Jamie says, I was good in primary and high school, but after 1995, I did nothing until 2013. sort of add this goldenrod color everywhere. In the iris. Just so that that nice coppery sort of color is there. Don't worry if it's a little bit too dark. We are still going to highlight. In some areas it's a little darker, like over here, and in here. This color is in the, the little reflection, I don't know if it's a windy house or a little shed or something. in there. Then I'm going to use the espresso again. Alex says that she's the same, drawn as a child, then stopped, moved into another town 15 years ago, tried some acrylic, tried comic, and since last year got back to childhood colored pencils. <laughs> Luke says I started with an art introduction for adults two years ago where we got to know all kinds of media and techniques. Oh, that's good. That's a, a nice way to get back into it. Uh, he says, last year I had some drawing classes and now I'm a Sheldon student. <laughs> Thanks, Luke. <laughs> Jesse says, personally I just started drawing with pencils about three or four years ago and I just keep drinking in more and more. That's good. Would you believe I also only started with pencils four years ago? No? Three, three and a half years ago. Maureen says I started painting a few years ago and about six months ago started with colored pencils. But I have been drawing all my life. <laughs> It's nice. I think it's like that with everything. You apply your time to it for a while and sometimes other things sort of, you know, come over your life's direction and then you find it again later on. But I think it happens for a reason. You, you find things at the time that you need to find them. Define a little bit in the reflection.
<laughs> Tracy says, Sheldine is the one who inspired me to pick up a pencil and draw a little over a year now. about that a lot lately <laughs> okay so I dip my brush in a little bit of the zested solvent and just any excess I um, put onto a paper towel and now I want to blend the wax base pencils so this is really gonna bring the pigment out and take that texture away so it looks smoother Take your time when you work around the, the very edge of the eye because you want that to... You don't want the, the circle to disappear or look, warp, look warped like you want it to be round. <laughs> Jamie's like, what Tracy said? <laughs> It's gonna be nice having this golden rod blended because that's gonna look pop out nicely. Jamie, you sound like you are a really big Edward Cullen fan. <laughs> Okay, great. So that's starting to look nice. Now we can add some more details. Um, let's go back into the pumpkin orange PC1032. Okay. 
Mm. Okay. I like that. Let's add some of the burnt ochre, PC943. Check all good. Thank you, Jamie. Oh, Jackie says, Guess what arrived in the post? Yay! So you got your calendar and everything. And your drawing of Kate, I'm glad. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm using the Burnt Ochre PC And that's about all I need to do with that. Um, I'm going to use the Espresso again, PC1099. to some of these darker patterns in the eye. And then this rounded bit underneath the eye. pupil darker later. I'll apply black over that. I wonder if I need to add black. Probably not. Maybe I'll just leave it like that. That looks dark enough. Oh, 
Uh, Jackie, I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, seeing the drawing in real life compared to like an image of it online, it's just, it's very different, isn't it? It just a photograph doesn't do it enough justice. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit more of the golden rod and then I'm going to blend that in. With the solvents. And then I will highlight and then I'll do like the reflection of the eyelashes over the top. And then I think I might take like a 15 minute break so I can feed my girls and then um, check any messages on Facebook and then I'll get back into it. Make sure no one else is having any problems. So when we add the um, the veins and that in the eye around here, it's, it will really start adding to the realism. But now, just to make some of those highlights a little lighter, I'm going to use the white pencil. I'm also going to use it to add a bit more texture. So just paying attention to the reference. That looks cool. That really, that makes a difference. Highlighting always makes the biggest difference. It's one of the most fun parts. Um, okay, I do think I'm actually gonna come in with some black. And I'm gonna do the reflection of the lashes and make the pupil really dark. And then we can start moving on with the surrounding areas. After I have a smidge of a break. <laughs> So black PC935. Okay. So darkening the pupil.
darkening just under the eyelid. Okay, then there seems to be sort of like little branches reflecting in the eye and then you can see the eyelashes just subtly going over the background like that. Now. I didn't apply, apply enough of a white highlight in between, so those eyelashes don't pop out as much. So what I'm going to do is use my... Ooh, actually, let's use a little bit of the titanium white powder. So I'm going to put a little bit of the powder in the lid with a, a brush so I'll just take some powder like that and put it in the lid and then I'm going to add a bit of water now you are supposed to add the touch-up texture but I don't like adding the touch-up texture because it just makes it too pasty. The water makes it a nice consistency to work with. And then I'm going to take a real tiny brush. So I'm going to use my 5 slash 0 brush and dip it in the white and emphasize this highlight a bit more. There we go, that looks a bit better. That's starting to look like a true reflection. Cool. Clean the brush. So that's made the iris look pretty cool. I'm very, very happy with that. And then the more we add details around the eye, the more it's just going to even add even more to the realism of the eye. So this is really, really fun. Um, so I'm going to have a quick break, 15 minutes, and then I will be back and we can finish it off. I know for some of you it's really late at night so feel free to go to bed. Um, just say goodbye before you go to bed and um, yeah this will still be available. If you have the link to this video then obviously it will be available whenever you need and it is available in the student portal. But um, Jesse, you can come back to the video to watch it later if you need to go to bed. Although I'm not sure what the time is by you. I don't think it's too late but some of you that are like in the UK 
you guys it'd be getting pretty late for you now I think <laughs> Jamie's like camera check 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 where's Esme I know it would be so nice to have Esme on these feeds but um Esme is not a student which is fair enough I mean she should have her own students her work is that good but um, yeah, she'll be on the public live streams, not the student ones. Alex says, the drawing of Kate was really amazing. I liked it very much. Thank you. Tracy likes the way the eye's looking. Tracy says, I agree with Jamie. I have to sit on something soft at least or else I end up standing hunched over. Jamie has a question. When using polychromos or prismas, you use blending liquids. Some people don't use them. Do you ever do that? And can you teach us that method? Um, the only time that I wouldn't use the liquid so much, which is very rarely, is um, like when I'm using the Fisher 400 sanded paper. That one, I tend to get a smooth enough result that I don't need to get use a liquid so um i will be using a lot more of the sanded papers from now on and um, i use the watercolor pencil watercolor paper today because we're using the watercolor pencils but when i'm not using the watercolor pencils we're going to be exploring a lot more of the textured papers i bought a few um different kinds so we'll do that and then i'll show you <laughs> Jess is like, it's only 3 p.m. yesterday, so we're good. <laughs> um, 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 cool. Okay, guys, I'm going to have a 15-minute break. Go grab a coffee, have a little sprinkle, <laughs> and then come back. So I'm going to feed the girls quick, and maybe I'm going to get my, some vegan chocolate. I need, I think it's time for chocolate. It's almost 9 a.m. <laughs> in the future. Except for Jamie, you're on the same page. <laughs> you're in Melbourne. Um, okay, before I babble on, I am going to have a break and I'll see you guys very soon. the black magic capture card so that I can use my proper camera for these live streams on the Mac um, okay let's work on the white of the eye mm. nice fresh coconut water <gasps> And vegan chocolates. Oh, thank you, Jamie. Jamie says watching your artwork come to life is magical. <laughs> it's a magic we are all capable of doing. Luke says, can you go over the titanium white again with colored pencil? Or should that be on top? No. You could keep working it if you want. You can go over the titanium white with colored pencil. And then if you go over too much of colored pencil, you can go over that again with a titanium white. So it is definitely a much better product to use than the acrylic paint markers. Because the paint markers are not archival, but the titanium white powder is. And the acrylic paint markers are just, they sort of just sit on the surface of the paper. They don't adhere to the paper almost like the pencils do but the titanium white does so it gets absorbed in there it's stuck in there <laughs> so it's a very useful powder to have and the powder is going to take you like that whole thing of titanium white will take a lifetime to finish so it'll get you very far mm -hmm. okay
I'm going to use Nectar for the pink in the eye. And then I want a warm grey. Or the white of the eye. So 20% warm grey. Maybe the 10% warm grey. Oh, this pencil is cracked. Okay, so on occasion with the pr uh, Prismacolor pencils, you are going to get a dud one, unfortunately. Um, I'll show you what it looks like. So you can see it's going to be a dud. So this one has a crack all the way from here, all the way to the side. So this one is probably not going to last. Actually, it's cracked all the way to the bottom. So this one, yeah, I think is going to break in half soon. Let's sharpen it and see if it holds. I can make this pencil work for me as long as I do not drop it. So I'm just going to sharpen these other two real quick. Okay, let's start off with the 20% warm grey, PC1051. PC1051 Um okay So I want to add this to where so under the eyelid, that's going to be where the, the most shadow is, just around the iris. cover this entire area here. Okay, then I want to use the 10% warm grey PC1050. Gray PC one oh five O and cover the rest. So go over the gray that we just put down and go over the rest of the white of the eye. Okay, then I want to use the Nectar PC1092. Oh, 
Sorry, I forgot to unmute you. Ah. Okay, you guys are just gonna have to bear with the noise of the sharpener when it happens so that I don't forget to unmute you. So I put the colors on the screen. All I did now is I applied the 20% warm gray PC1051. And then over the top of that, I cut, used the 10% warm gray PC1050. And now I'm going to use the Nectar PC1092 to add the pink areas. <laughs> okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna mute anymore because I forget to unmute. Okay, so using the Nectar to add some of those pink tones. And there and here. Now let's blend that in with a solvent. So, I'm using the Zested Pencil Blend. And then I just dab the tip onto a paper towel before I actually apply it to my paper. Okay, that is starting to look so cool. Um, then what I'd like to do is I'm going to use the white PC938. And I'm just gonna lighten up some of the areas. So just adding a bit of white like this, <clears throat> excuse me, um, helps add to the rounded look of the eye. And then again, I'll blend that in with solvent. And then we can start working on those tiny little veins. <clears throat> so 
best chocolate. I'm going to use Chestnut PC1081. <clears throat> Texture. Get closer. Just a squiggly, very light. Create little squiggles. You need a very sharp pencil. And then the squiggle over here, it's a weird one. It's literally like a little. Up and down pattern. See if I can give you a better perspective of that. So very subtle veins. And this one is the darkest one. And then that's about as far as you want to go with the veins. You don't want to make them any darker because the, the eye isn't bloodshot. It's just, that's just the kind of veins we have in our eyes. So you don't want to make it look bloodshot. So you don't want to add any more to it. So I'm going to just blend the end here with the solvent. And then you can just gently go over those little vein squiggles you made. Just to remove any texture. There we go. That's pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. Okay, so still using the chestnut color, 
I'm going to start working on the tear duct over here. <clears throat> no worries, Alex. Good night. Thank you so much for joining us. It was really nice to have you on the stream. Jessie's saying, so less is more with the veins in the eye. Oh, you look like it. Uh, yes, well, you, you're just paying attention to the reference. So you're trying to do what you see, recreate what you see. But um, you don't want to overdo it in terms of color. So that's why if you're using the right color and the right pressure, you won't overdo it. Because if I used a red, it would look a lot different. It, but I'm using a, a like purplish sort of pinkish tone. So I don't know. I, I, did, I did create a lot of veins. So I wouldn't say that it's less. But you just want to be careful. You want to do it subtly. Okay. So add the chestnut color here. And then those, those really bright highlights that we see in the tear duct will use the touch up the titanium white powder again for that. Okay, then I'd like to add some of the nectar again in the tear duct. So that is PC1092. added every way. We're not fussed about the highlighting because we're going to add that now with the titanium white powder. <clears throat> I do want to add a bit more of this over here. There we go. Okay, so blend that. more powder and water because that's dried up. So this again is the brush and pencil colored pencil titanium white powder by Aliona Nicholson. tiny little brush
And if you find it's not wide enough, then just add another layer. And then another good spot to add this is just on the waterline over here. Just need to add more water to the powder. Now generally these are the kind of things you do at the very end but I'm always way too excited to wait <laughs> to do the highlighting at the end. I just want to, as soon as I have the opportunity to do the highlighting I want to do it. A little bit of a highlight in here. As long as it looks real, then I feel like it's mission accomplished. <laughs> Rightio! Now we're working on the areas around the eye. So I'm going to use my black PC935. Because I've already applied color underneath the black, it's okay to use black. If you're using black on its own, it can make the image look flat, but if you are using black over another color, then um, it's fine. It won't be too overpowering. There is a bit of a texture on the eyelid here. The crease isn't completely straight.
Let's add some black in the brows here. Okay, I want to blend that in and then I'm going to sharpen the black pencil and I'm going to make sure to start adding the proper details of the eyelashes and the eyebrow hairs. So using the solvent. Okay, and then I'm going to use a bigger brush for the eyebrow. So I'm just using this number 10 U Spicy Makeup Brush. I'm just going over those soft sort of brow hairs that we created with the espresso color a lot earlier. Okay, now we can start adding the detailed black hairs. So, might as well do the eyebrow first.
your things. But. So even though it looks really dark here, we can still use a lighter wax based pencil, so we'll probably use a warm grey. Patiently waiting my return. <laughs> Luke says, darkest darks and lightest lights really bring it to life. Yeah. It is. If you can get your shadows, your darkest shadows right, and your lightest highlights right, and the values in between, you're all set for realism. right in my way. Sharpen that again. Okay, now, these brows, they curve here, so I just want to make those curves look some odd ones that go in a different direction. So some seriously bushy eyebrows. Which is obviously normal for a male, but it's a lot of hairs. <laughs>
Let's do these bottom eyelashes. No. <clears throat> we'll do that last. We first want to work on the texture of the skin and then we'll do that there. I'm going to work more, a little bit more with the colour and the texture of the skin here before I add those eyelashes as well. But before I carry on, what I'd like to do is take a little bit of the 20% Warm Grey PC1051. as if it was some highlights on some of these brows. So there's a bit of like a crayon -y look over here with the texture of the pencil which I want to lose. So I'm going to very carefully with my solvent, I'm going to blend it in, but I'm still going to use my brush as if I am just smoothing out the textures of the hairs. I don't want to blend the hairs in to each other. I just want that crayon sort of texture to go away. And it doesn't, when you're blending with solvent like this, it doesn't move around a lot like the watercolor does, the watercolor pencils do. So don't worry, it's not like you're going to blend it all in together. using a brush to just go over the brow hairs that you created already. I don't know if you can see the difference but when you take away that sort of textured look it does help a bit. Subtle changes make big differences.
for those brows look a bit better. I may have overworked them a little. <laughs> Just a little. But okay, so now we want to work more on the skin tones. I'm getting tired. I only went to sleep at like 12.30 and I woke up at 4.30 get ready for a six o'clock stream. Right. Let's let's actually go back in with the chestnut. I can see this color a bit more in the skin tones above and around the eyelid. So chestnut PC1081. Jesse, that's actually a difficult question. So Jesse's asking, how much water on a brush should I use for water pencils? So, um, not much, unless you want to really water it down. So, I the the gray areas around the eye, I used a lot of water on the brush, and I just sort of wanted to get a very subtle wash almost of that color around the eye but I use less water around the areas that um, that are more detailed so I, I'd use a less water and I'd also use the brush to move it move the color to create textures if I could like over here when I applied the water to the watercolor pencil I used circular motions with a brush to almost help give a little bit more of a texture if that makes sense, it's something you have to play around with. So with watercolor pencils, you have to play around with using different amounts of water and trying to create texture. Makes sense? That's good. Okay, and then yes. So some of the beige sienna PC one o eight o. Sienna PC1080. That's going to be perfect for the skin here. We were talking about you, not me. <laughs> Suri's confused. Okay, let's sharpen that. Such a horrible sound. 
So now, start adding some of this color to the bottom waterline. A little bit in the eye as well. So I'm going to use this color to start creating those textures. So like the little creases. No detail is left ignored. Now, I know a lot of you would try drawing the eye. You do the iris wonderfully, do the eyelid, maybe even the eyebrow, and then you forget about the skin tones and, and the texture and the skin tones. But it really makes a difference. If you can pay attention to the skin tones as well, the textures, the highlights in the skin tones, especially if you have the detail there in your reference, add it because it helps. It just makes it look really good. Like that drawing that we did with all the wrinkles in the last eye, every wrinkle was important and it just made it look so good. Every time you added a little bit of a highlight on one area and brought a wrinkle to life, it just made the eye look amazing. So adding to the skin tones or paying attention and not slacking off on that is worthwhile. Add to this over here too. Mm. I think someone might be here. I'll be right back. All good. All good. No, maybe not. No. If the dogs really go mad then there's someone here All you have to do is just pay attention to the creases. So usually there's a pattern. You don't have to get every crease right. If you can just get like the general pattern down, then that's fine.
Okay, here this extends out more. Okay, let's blend that in and use a bigger brush again. hardly put any solvent on the brush. You, a little bit goes a very long way. We're nearing the end, guys. <laughs> You've done well to last this long. Be back. Right, so now that that's blended in, now we're going to use our white. Um, white PC938. And just want that to die down a little bit more because that's a blurry 
blurry edge. So I want to make those edges blurry. So just go over it with a white. Okay, now we're going to use the white to add the skin tone textures. Not skin tone textures, the texture on the skin. You guys know what I mean. over here okay and then once we get these textures of the skin in then we can add the Lashes over the top. Okay, I'm getting a little sick of this music. I need to change it over. <laughs> Are you guys still there? <laughs> falling asleep on me. Okay, let's get some different music on here. Sharpen this. <laughs> Quietly watching. So by adding the white like this, between those patterns we put down earlier, it's creating a really nice um, texture in the skin.
See what a difference that makes. I'm just going to blend that white over there in and over the top there. So just dipping my brush in solvent. Okay, now we can do the eyelashes. So using black PC935. Let's do the top lashes first. So the lashes here go down. These ones go down and curve up. Not many of them go very high. Okay.
but I can still see some of the pan pastel little mocks that I put in earlier, so that's going to help me. Okay. I don't want to overdo the eyelashes, but they are very dark and black, so that's that's fine. Okay, and then I think I'd like to add a little bit of the Nectar PC1092 skin here. Okay, let's blend that in and then assess. So the time is, so it's 10.30, so not too bad. We didn't get to start on the drawing until about 40 minutes after the stream, so it's taken a little less than four hours to do the eye, which I think is really good. Last week's eye, I think, what, what was last week's eye? I think four and a half, almost five hours. But it really didn't feel that way. It's nice, time does fly.
Okay, I think I am feeling pretty happy with that. Let's see if I can get you guys to get a better look. So, that is it. So, actually, I feel like maybe around the iris, I might have to just use a little bit of the espresso. Because I've made the made it very very soft. It probably doesn't have to be quite as soft as that. It's a little better. So that's a nice close up of what we did today, and I really like it. So here is the eye. I didn't go as grey around the edges and it could probably be a little bit more um, let's see if I can just make that a little less there we go so the reference compared to the drawing the reference has a lot more grey around the edge um, um, I am also using, the paper that I'm using has quite a warm tone to it, so it's not completely white. So um, I'd have to apply a fair bit of grey to get that grey colour, but I am actually, I'm not fussed about that at all. I'm happy with the warm tones as is. And um, yeah, I like the way the iris turned out. It's not exactly the same. I think I really overdid the eyebrow. <laughs> There's a way more hair in my eyebrow drawing than there is in the reference. <laughs> but I'm still happy with the complete um, look of it. I think it looks really, really nice. I love the iris. It looks like a realistic eye. So I can't complain. I am quite happy with that. So I'm going to add teeny tiny little signature. Just here. 